Hi guys, this is Brandon Miller. I'm here with another Flash-based Adobe Air tutorial. And what we're going to be doing tonight is creating new windows from a main window in Adobe Air. Um, as you can see, what I have here on the stage is just a blank area that's uh, 200 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall because that's the size of my initial application. That's what I want it to look like when it first starts. Um, and what I've done to fill this app up, I've made some different classes here. You can see my app body, which is exported as app body for ActionScript. You can do that by going right clicking and going to properties. And then you see right here, I have exported it for ActionScript, and it's going to automatically create this class app body. And I've also created a close button. What this is going to do is export as close button, but um, obviously that's pretty simple English. It's going to close it. And then I've also put in here a 9 slice scaled top chrome. And um, that's just going to be the little thing that you can grab onto to drag it around the stage. That's all we're going to do for this, this right here. It's just going to make a new window with these same things and basically duplicate the initial window. Um, but do it without any kind of chrome or anything like that. So here you can see the code. I start with all of my global settings. Um, the master window is going to be stage.native window. That's easy enough. It's just going to be a reference to the main application's uh, native window. And then I did the same here with my buttons as I did in my initial tutorial with custom Chrome. Um, I've created a click, a mouse down, a mouse over, and a mouse out. Um, the mouse over and mouse out could also be roll over and roll out. It doesn't really matter in this instance. I've also created a variable called button buffer space and I've given it a value of 5. What this is going to do is it's going to declare the number of pixels in between all of my buttons on the X and the Y value when I call it later on in the program. When I set up the main application, since it's a, a clean stage, there's nothing on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the function Chrome Setup and I'm going to pass the value of master window, which is the stage.native window. So I'm going to pass a reference to stage.native window to the function Chrome Setup. And you can see that down here, right here. This Chrome Setup is going to take whatever is referenced to it and use it as the current window. This is going to apply specifically to a window, a native window. And it's not going to return anything, so I have a colon void here at the end of it. Um, I'm going to create a new object, which I'm going to label new object. And um, the first thing it's going to be is my top Chrome object. That was the thing that you can just click on to grab and drag your application around the, your desktop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an event listener of button down, and I'm going to call the button action function. Um, now, down here, this is very important because I'm going to name my top Chrome object. I'm going to name that top Chrome, and that's very important when I call my button action because my button action function uses the names in a switch statement to tell what it's supposed to do to my buttons. Um, I want the top chrome to be 35 pixels high so I set that right here and then I add it to current window dot stage. Current window, window remember is the reference to whatever I pass to it. In this first instance it just happens to be stage dot native window. Then I'm going to go on down and I'm also going to add a close button to this. Uh, because if I didn't have Chrome on it, I would have no way to exit the application. So I'm going to add a new close button. I'm going to reassign the new object to that. And I'm also going to add another listener of button click and then send that to button action as well. Remember, button action is going to be a switch statement. And it's just going to parse through all the different names of the possible buttons. And when it hits the right one, it's going to do something to it. I also add to this a uh, button over, and that's going to run the button rollover function. And I also add a button out, which is going to run the button rollout function. It just changes the alpha, and I'll show you guys that in just a little bit. Now, for this uh, close button, I want that to show up in the upper right hand corner. So, what I'm going to do is new object.x, which is uh, actually the close button, I'm going to set that to the current window which is the function that's passed here. That's the, the reference to the window that I'm currently working on. I'm going to do the stage dot stage width. So that's going to be the entire width of the stage, which is also the width of your top Chrome. 
So I'm going to basically take the top chrome width or the stage width and I'm going to subtract the width of the close button. New object dot width right here. So I'm subtracting the width of my new object from the width of the stage which will then just allow me to show the entire button. But it's going to be butted right up to the um, the right end of the window. So I'm going to subtract my button buffer space from that as well, which remember is a five pixel space. So I'm going to have five pixels of buffer on the right hand side of my close button. Then I'm also going to set the Y because right now the Y is going to be zero. It automatically comes in X of zero and Y of zero. So when I add this to the stage, I don't want it to be butted up against the top either. So I'm going to add the button buffer space there as well. So now it's going to be five pixels off of the top along with five pixels off of the right of the stage. And then again, same thing as I did with the top chrome, I'm going to load this object into the current window. And then um, there's one more thing I want to do. I don't want to have an empty stage body. I don't want it to be transparent. I want you to know that there's going to be an application there. So I'm going to reassign new object to be a new app body. And then I'm going to name that app body. Just as I named this one up here, close. Um, and then I'm just going to add that. But I want the app body to be underneath everything else, and I'm adding it last. So that's going to present a problem because if I don't add it to the zero index uh, on the display list, it's going to show up on top of everything, and I'm not going to see anything. So I'm going to add the child at index of zero. And what add child at does is it tells you what child you want to add, new object, at the index of what, which is zero. And that's how it's going to set up my stage. I'm going to set up the top Chrome and add it up there. I'm going to give that a button down so I can drag it later on. I'm also setting the height of 35 and the name at top chrome. I'm going to add a close button which I add a bunch of different button listeners to for the click, the over, and the out. And um, I'm setting the X and the Y so that it shows up in the upper right hand corner with a 5 pixel border from the right and from the top. I'm going to name it close and add that to the stage. And then I add the application body so that I don't have an empty application and I set that to the display list index of zero so it's underneath everything else. That's basically going to set up the entire look and feel of this application. Very, very simple application.